All right. Shalom Shabbat Shalom Sendit Salam and also a, a special greeting on this uh, Tisha B'Av, this particular day, Tisha B'Av. And although we did not intend to uh, um, fast, we find ourselves, in a sense, in a spiritual fast. And now, Tisha B'Av, if, you, if you're just watching this one, please try to check out the previous vid. There's a previous vid that we posted on um, Rastafari, on the Rastafari Tisha B'Av for... 2012 for 2012 and that video will hopefully um, explain a little clearer from our root from our root and our truth as Ethiopian Hebrews as black Jews as black Hebrews even black Hebrew Israelites also but moreover as elect Rastafari because we as Rastafari as a true Rastafari who have submitted ourselves to the teaching of His Majesty, to the gospel of Yeshua HaMoshiach, we have been called to that election. And that election is none about I and I self-righteousness. And this is why we've had to um, teach and to preach and to show in the scriptures and in the teachings of His Majesty exactly where we stand, where we all have to recognize. Now, I want to say this as we get into this double portion. So this is a double portion. If you have been um, uh, following and studying the Torah, studying the Orit, studying these Rastafari sabbatical um, studies, Sabbath scrolls, the RSS, um, you already know that this is Matot, right? Or actually um, Matot, Matot, because that's a Tet and not a Tau or Tawi. So that's a S sound, as we have in our pure language. So with the knowledge from Nabab Bait and the studying of our basic um, foundation of language, so before we even try to fantasize so much about, oh, I want to be all fluent, so forth and so on, you have to get a basic foundation. You know what I'm saying? That basic foundation is the, is the Amharic Bible, the home studies of the Nabab Bait. Now, in that process, as one continues to grow and develop along with Sabbatical studies, you know, and you'll find that in one search, and you know, one will gain the confidence to check out the 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 Amharic, and if one doesn't have the Amharic available, we also have to check out the Hebrew as well. Those are our basic foundations as a Judeo um, Christian people. That's the divine heritage of I and I as true and faithful, called, chosen, and faithful. Aras Teferi, to the glory of His Majesty, in the name of our Black Lord and Savior, Adunenu Yeshua HaMoshiach. So, in Matot, or Metot, Matot, and here we're still in um, Bemidbar, you know saying? We're still in Bemidbar, or Bamidbar, or the Hebrew um, Book of Numbers, right? And this volume we publish, and also the wiki is there online for those who might not have a, a volume like this, but we're publishing this in this form. In fact, we also have Devarim. Devarim, right here, Devarim, it's available. You understand Devarim, the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy, volume 5. So now we have the five um, Hebrew books of the Torah, the study books. It's our study books, our basic level of study, becoming more familiar with our ancient, once lost heritage. Now, once we'll say, well, this is our stolen legacy. On a certain level, that might be, I won't even say it, it's not really true when we really understand who we are. Because we, our ancestors, turned their backs on Jah's way. And what we have experienced of slavery and, 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 and everything that we've experienced in its root. Now, have the Gentiles gone too far? Yes, they have. You understand? But first, we have to get our house in order. And the Tisha B'Av, the Tisha B'Av, let's go, let's go through that again. So we just wanted to show you that Deuteronomy or the Hebrew book Devarim, Devarim, these are the words of the words, Devarim, Devarim, 
it's it, it's available, and we're going to try to work out um, something where ones can actually order all five, all five books. You know, and we don't have that available just yet. But this is very important for one's home study to have this basic foundation. But for right now, Wiki is there. The Wikipedia links, at least one should have. This is just a review. It's, it's very important for us to review because we have um, new brothers and sisters joining our studies all the time. And sometimes, you know, there's a lot of vids already out there, and ones might not have the opportunity to go through all of them. So in some of the videos like this particular one for the 42nd and 43rd, the 42nd and 43rd for um, Matot and Masse, which is the Targum, the translation for Matot means the tribes. Now, this we do have on our website, the study page, yes, yeah, Samantawi, um, Senbet Orit Nebab, which means of the week or of the seven days, Senbet, the Sabbath of the week, the Sabbath for those seven days, Orit, which is in Ethiopic, the Torah, Nebab means the reading. So this is our weekly um, Torah readings and feedings. Now, there's a very good site out there. It's called a Hebrew for for Christian or for Christians. And it was on that site as we were doing our study saying, what should we, what should we study, Oja, and what should we present from the foundational teaching since we are Judeo Christian, Ethiopians in spirit and in truth, the true foundation for us. In other words, we are Hebrews. We are the once lost but now found Beta Israel. Yet the Moshiach, right, yet the Messiah and um uh let's see, let's get this book right here. Um and, and we give thanks to the brother who, who did this art. Um, the, the brethren, just, just a name check on the brethren who, who does the art on the Yeshua picture, the Yeshua's picture. Okay, Ross, Ross Morgan. I, I think the, the artist for this is Ross Morgan. This might not be, we may not be correct with it, but we think that the artist for this particular picture is Ross Morgan. Now, this particular book right here, um, it's, it's for disciples, Dekamez Amorit. You know, so disciples and others who are on discipleship, and if you are numbered, that means you've sent forward your application and you've confirmed that basic, that basic accountability. You know, understand? This is the Jewish Trinity. This is actually a, a print of this. You understand? A print of this that we have available. You understand for some of the brothers and the sisters and ones who want to order. We're going to go into this a little bit more. This is really a study, another study book. But um, the original picture, and we touched on this in one of the, the other vids that we put out there, the original picture that the author, Joel Natan, and you probably heard I and I um, speak on um, this brother right here, he writes a book about the Jewish trinity when the Rebbe's or when the rabbis believed in our wooded Memphis Kedus, when they believed in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, of course... At that time when the uh, Rebis or the Rebim or the Rebim, the rabbis, had faith or believed, Mamen, in Ab, Rewolid, Wemenfes, Kedus. They believed in the Ahadu Amlak. They believed in the triune God. You know what I'm saying? Who is the one God? This is when they were black. You know what I'm saying? Or of the Ethiopum Prolum as Tacitus, the Roman historian of circa 70 A.D., when Titus and I think his son or something, Vespasian, they were related somehow, but they were Roman generals, you understand, know who sacked and destroyed Jerusalem. And that's a very, very important part of our story. So when we're speaking now on the Tisha B'Av, the Tisha B'Av. Like we said, check out that video. We point to a couple of different pages out there. We also went through an article by a, uh, a black um, a rabbi, um, Rabbi uh, Shlomo Ben um, Levy. He, he wrote an article and the asked, what does it, speaking of Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, 
What does the ninth of the Hebrew month of Av, what does it mean to us as black Jews, you understand, or black Judahites? You understand, what does it mean to us? It's a very, very good article. Check out that vid. This should be the previous vid because hopefully we'll have an opportunity to post this particular vid next. You understand? The next thing that we post up there. So this is the Ehud. This is the Ehud. Ehud is the first day known in the West as, quote, Sunday. You understand? And this is the Tisha B'Av. Um, this is the fast. The fast began on the eve of the, not the eve of the Shabbat, really the eve of what you call Saturday. Because the eve of what you call Saturday is actually the, the eve of what we know as Ehud, or you call Sunday. You over, so it's not I and I who has confused things, it's the Babylonians, you understand, and even the lost sheep who have confused or who are confused. Hopefully, y'all willing, we will be able to come to unity, to unity in the knowledge of the Bain Ha Elohim, in the knowledge of the Moshiach. Now, Tisha B'Av, it speaks of the destruction of both the first temple or Solomon's temple, as well as the second temple, which was Herod's temple. Now, Herod was an Indumean, but he wanted to be king of the Jews. In other words, he was an Indumean. That means he was from Esau. You understand? From Esau, Edomite. Now, if you check out some of our Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, but the brothers, they're a little bit more radical. They are our right wing. You understand? We were talking and teaching on this a little bit earlier, and it's going to behoove us to really explain you understand who's who, you understand, in our family and how to basically identify who's who because we have the centrist ones are like the black Jews or even some of the Ethiopian um, um, Jews, the Beta Israel who are in Israel and they have uh, learned or even been um, re, you could call it re-converted uh, or whatnot, so forth and so on. Now, I know there's a lot of issues on that, but first let's, you know, get off that emotional stuff. First, we need the logistics. You know what I'm saying? First, we need to, the logos. First, we need the word. You know what I'm saying? As Hebrews um, chapter 5 says, when we should have been teachers, you know what I'm saying? We had need that one teach us again, that which be the first principles of the oracle of God, the first principles of the word of God. Very interesting, too, because as we get into the next Torah, um, the next Torah book, which is called um, Devarim, Devarim actually means the words. In other words, and these are the words. You know, and these are the the rhema, the rhema words. Now, let us go forward. There's there's, there's much, you know, there's, as Burhana Salase said, Burhana Salase, A.K.A. Bob Marley. Um, the Honorable Robert Nesta Molly says so many things to say right now. There's so many things to say. But we want to follow the way, the truth, and the life of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. All right, to the glory of the King of Kings. Now, when we look at Tisha B'Av and we look at this double portion, First of all, this particular document right here, which is a free, is, is, is a study wear, free wear, sheer wear, you understand? Um, yes, I'm in uh, We In the English, it's called the Sabbath House Readings. Sabbath House Readings. So if you go to the website, www.lojsociety.org, um, and you can click on the study page or forward slash study, you will find it and a lot of other um, free wear, share wear, study wear material. But this is, this is crucial right here because this helps us to get our house in order. You know what I'm saying? To get our father's house in order and whatever our particular mansion, you know what I'm saying? Whatever particular mansion or group or grouping or family, so forth and so on. He says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Now, when we look at ourselves as 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 Hebrews, uh, Israelites, the once lost but now found house of Israel or Beit Israel, 
we have to recognize that we have our our center. You understand know our, our 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 center and side to side. It's almost like this thing going on in England. They call it the the 30th or the XXX, which is a is a whole link there if you check out the first video Rastafari Tisha Ba'av 2012. Um, near the end of it, we went to a particular site. I think it was a uh, Parables blog. And we, we, you know, we link the information there. I think also in the video, the information there as well. If it's not there, then we'll we'll try to update you. Or you can probably search out some of the check out the vid, and you'll probably find the information you need to find it for your for yourself. Now, another thing we want to say before we get into this, right? Get into this study and hopefully get the truth of that into I and I, in I and I heart and in I and I mind. Is we want to heal up. Our Wendem, Wendem Oludare, because he called, and you know, me and him, we we read. So now we don't have an opportunity to reason with everyone as we would as we would like. But with this technology, um, Yah willing, hopefully soon, Yah willing, we'll be able to have certain call conferencing with certain groups of um with disciples, with those who are who are numbered and accountable, those who are seeking to be accountable for their their growth, their study, and their progress. Like I said before, I'll say it one more time. I did not begin studying this because I wanted to so-called teach it. It's not like I wanted to not teach it like some people out there. You know what I'm saying? But it's not because I, st I studied because I wanted to be a teacher and rah, 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 rah. No. Mm -mm. I wanted to know the truth for myself. And in that process of learning the truth, for myself, or learning and, and learning these things, and recognizing what we did not know, and all these careless errors and ignorant errors that we was doing as his people, and how the, the Yah opened up my spiritual uh, vision. I saw the devils and the Satans laughing at us, but also afraid, but laughing at us as we went astray from the movement, and Rastafari got into this state of so-called inertia and confusion, and disunity, and disharmony. So I, I said, John, what can I and I do? He says, to teach those what you have learned. You always said, in Christ, you know, to, to, to be an example, so that others also in Christ will study, will grow, and be those teachers in spirit and in truth for what they know to those who are willing to receive it. You always said, there's much work for I and I. You know what I'm saying to do. You know what I'm saying, and we should be joyful at that. You know, so study with joy, learn and grow with joy. All right, be children in wrath and all this mixed up moods and our attitudes. Be children in that. You know what I'm saying, but don't be children in knowledge. You know what I'm saying, be accountable for what you know, because on the judgment, you know what I'm saying, on the day of judgment, you know what I'm saying, and there's a day of judgment. But those of us who are born twice, you know what I'm saying, only face dying once. You know what I'm saying? We're not even talking about just even a physical death, you know what I'm saying? But if that be so, you know what I'm saying, there's still good hope because we know, even from the Fitta Neges, that the righteous, the Sadiq Khan, you know what I'm saying, those of our brothers and sisters who truly were in the true faith of the King of Kings and his Christ, in word and deed, even if they are lay down to sleep. It's just that they sleep. John has the power to wake them, to give them a new body even. You know, this, this is the realness. Some folks may be on some little, some little sectarian denominational kind of thing. You know, but this is the teaching of his majesty for everyone who is in his house. You know, so we're going to touch on the fact that, that, that you know, the Ethiopian Hebrew in that sense, or black Jewish is the centrist view, and then we have the right wing our black Hebrew Israelites, you know what I'm saying, who are so radical that in this present day and time, many of them even reject Ethiopia on a certain level. But that should be overstandable, and that should not stop you from manifesting the light. Because remember, even in the time of Yeshua, many of them rejected Yeshua. And it was not the so-called white Jews, so-called, who rejected Yeshua. That's not the point of it. You know what I'm saying? It was we. Even Tacitus, is a Roman historian, 70 A.D. That's the second time, you know what I'm saying, the temple was destroyed on the very same day. And that is the reason 
for the season that we know as Tisha B'Av or Tisha B'Av. Actually, Tisha B'Av will be more correct with the Hebrew, but it said today, Tisha B'Av. You understand, which means the Tisha, the ninth of the month of Av. So we have 586 when the Babylonians had to fire bun. Where's, 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 where's this right here? So, you know, like in Aya, in Aya, 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 Bengi. You know, the Babylonians, you know, the Babylonians destroyed Solomon's temple. You understand? And, and I suspect that this is where the, this counterfeit so-called worldly Illuminati free masonry kind of come out of that. You understand? Come out of that. Could we see the same thing going on with this 2012 so-called Zion Olympics? You understand? A counterfeit. You know, like we already know about whitewashing of Yeshua. You understand? We, we, we recognize it. Caesar Borgias. So how be it they don't do it in other ways too. Right now they're trying to build a quote new Jerusalem in England or London. But that should not bother us. You understand? If we be about our father's business. You know what I'm saying? So we have to learn what I and I Father's business is really about. So we have to get our heads and heart in order. And the initiation, the initiation is the repentance and the new birth. You know what I'm saying? According to the teaching of His Majesty. Live and direct, straight and simple, not, not all the zigzag and everything else. We don't have time for that. You understand? Too many you understand? Too many are, are suffering, dying, and even going out of this life, and they might not have had an opportunity to hear the good news of his imperial majesty. And that's the real shame, my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters. So, um, all right, so, so, so let us look at this chart right here. So you can download this. Please do. Here we have 42. If you look at 42, let's, let's get a little bit of light on this right here, point to this right here, and let's get a little bit of light on the camera, right? Okay, right there. You see that 42? 42 and 43. You see the asterisk there? There's the asterisk, right? Matot, right? Matot. Now, Bamarinya, there we go, right? Bamarinya. So we're at 42 and 43. 42 and 43. Now, 42 is Negadoch. Negadoch which means tribe, as Moa, Andesa, Ze'im, Negede, Negede, Ze'im, Negede, Yehuda, right? The conquering line of the tribe of Judah. But this speaks to tribes. But, uh, the Ibrayist Kwankwa, in the Ibrayist, in the Hebrew Kwankwa, in the Hebrew language, or Kewan, Kewa, Kewan, Kewa, Kewan, Kewa, Kwankwa. Right, matot or metot, matot, 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 as some Jews would say, it consists of the Torah portion. There's three. There's three readings. So, in a gathering, if one is gathering on the churchical, or in the mikorah, similar to the quote synagogue, we call it mikorah. There are these three readings. You understand? There, there are these three readings. There's the Torah portion. There's the haftarah or the Nabiyat, the prophetical, and there's the Berit, Berit Hadasha, which means the New Covenant, right? The New Covenant, or the Hadith Kidan. Take note of this, that the New Testament is the revealed Old Testament, or the revealed Torah, while the Torah and the Old Testament is the concealed New Testament, or New Covenant. This is very important for I and I people to understand now. Of course, we have some of our Jewish or Hebrew people who reject that. That's a shame because they rejected that in 586 B.C. And then they were forced to accept the Babylonians. And you know what? They accepted the Babylonians with so much wickedness. They accepted it. Think about it. Same thing happened 655 years later. Roughly circa 70 A.D. under Tito or Titus and Vespasian, you understand? And this is where the, the, the latest diaspora, because many who did survive, they fled into Africa. You understand? They fled into various parts of Africa. You understand? And many of our African Hebrews, 
You know, saying all testify and be a witness to. It. Besides, in addition to the Ethiopian Hebrews, you know, saying or the Falasha or the Beta Israel, because we too are Hebrews. They are Falashas of the East. We are Falashas of the West. Now, one will say, "Well, there's only there's only these over there." That's not what Jah's words say. You know, saying so, we rather have faith in Jah than rely on the arm of flesh and blood that tries to deny and deceive us. You know, saying because they profit. You know, saying off of our ignorance. And it's time to bring them to their prophesied bankruptcy. So we have to get wise to I and I salvation. So it begins with the teaching of his majesty and this regular discipline. You know, saying the regular discipline. You know, and ones have to do this for themselves because they're, not, they're never going to really um, discover or uncover it until they become obedient to the gospel. Not like, yeah, I heard it, yeah, I left you yeah. No. Become obedient to the gospel, the good news of his majesty and his Christ. These are, these are serious days and times. And if you don't get it, well, may Jah open your eyes. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to curse one who on a play or maybe really are ignorant. Because that's what, it seems like they're already under a curse. You know, so why should I add my word to that and get my psychic vibes all wrapped up in that? You understand? When they curse I and I, I and I still bless them in the name of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, Numbers chapter 30, verses 30, verses 2 to Numbers chapter 32, verse 42, which usually would be one reader, or it could be broken down into a couple of readers, a couple of different readers. We'll explain that, or there's information out there as well on that. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 1 to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 3. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to um, verse 37. These are the readings. So, so some basic, basic readings. But why we um, remind ones of um, these uh, Torah portion books right here. Because sometimes it's good to have the book. If you don't have the book, that's why we keep pointing you to the wiki, you know, and to other source information so you can find it for yourself. It's not about just selling books or whatever like that. No, because it's greater things. When you recognize what's, what our divine heritage is about, these are the least things. You understand? This is why we seek to be diligent in encouraging ones and ones. You understand? Because I and I are ears of Jah and co-ears of the Moshiach. You understand? We all are, and there's an opportunity for all of I and I. You understand? If ones make their wills obedient to his good influences and to the ones whom he sent in his name with their works following. All right. So let's get into this right here for, for un momento. One, one moment, and we're also going to touch on, like I said, there's a couple of different subjects, subject matters that are, um, how can we say, that are interconnected in this, you, you know, that are connected in this particular matter. There's a particular book here that in the other version, um, we touched on it briefly. Um, let's see if we have, if we have this over here. Um, well, you, you, you know of... You should be familiar with, let's see, um, from Babylon to Timbuktu. I know we've talked about that. We've talked about that before. Oh, John just showed me this right here. We've talked about that before from Babylon to Timbuktu, right? That's the particular book we want to look for right now. It might be anywhere within the gates right now, um, even though I should have it over here. But we touched on that. Just make a note of that from Babylon to Tim. Oh, here it goes right here. Hallelujah. All right. From Babylon to this, this, this particular document, um, Burhan Yehun Allah, let there be light. Okay, right here. From Babylon to Timbuktu. This is a very, very, we cannot underestimate, underrate the importance of this. And those who may have read it, you need to continue to read it and study it. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we read something and we get a basic idea, we get some first ideas, but there's more that Jah wants to show us in there. You know, we will focus on what piques our interest and curiosity. You understand? But that's where we have to learn the way of Jah so we know what we really should be looking for. Right? From Babylon to Timbuktu. And if you check out some of the vids on the, on the history, you know, of it and also what's going on presently with the whole um, Muhammadanism. You understand? Or Muhammadanism. You understand? I know it's Ramadan for the faithful um, Muslims, Muhammadan who love the King of Kings. To the Mohammedan who love the King of Kings and his Christ, 
Peace be upon you. To the rest of y'all, like Mohammed, your prophet said, you're going to hell if you keep fighting against the King of Kings and his Christ. And we showed you that in the next video, actually. We could show you the Hadith from your sources. We could show you the Quran in Arabia Fusa. So, you know, don't, don't try to dabble, you know, saying, with the truth. Acknowledge it, you know, acknowledge, accept the evidence, and let's move on. You know, saying, there's work to be done. Now, this book right here from Babylon, this is the title page right here. It's very, very important because once you understand this, then it becomes obvious what this Tisha B'Av is really all about and why, you understand, why it is um, important, why it matters, you understand, why, how, and why it matters to I and I. And then we can look at some of the prophetic of what's going on. You see, the Gentiles, the, 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 the Londonites, you understand? Yeah, the Londonites, you know, um, you call them some other ites too, but they, they, they're pretentious, um, you know. Um, let, let's not go into that just yet. We want to deal with this Torah portion, which is called Tribes. This is a very good book too, this book right here. We, point, we, we talked about this book before, and this book is by Joel Kotkin. I don't know what it's about some of the Joels. You know, the Joels, there's, there's Joel Natan and there's Joel Kotkin. But it's a very important prophecy in the book of Joel concerning us, Yovasan, concerning the Judahites, concerning the Sabians, the faithful um, children of the Queen of Sheba. Yovasan, because all Ethiopians are not faithful Ethiopians, it's like all Hebrews and Israelites are not faithful you know what I'm We're looking for our faithful brother, our true brothers and sisters that Yeshua HaMoshiach said. He said, who is my brother and sister and mother? Those who seek to do the will of my father. You know, those are our true brothers and sisters. This is a very, very important book. And we touched on this in another, um, in another, in another set of reasonings perhaps a couple of years ago, tribes, how race, Remember we were talking about seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, right? How race, religion, or hymenote, and identity, how race, religion, and identity determine success. Determine what? Success in the new global economy. You know what I'm saying? In the new global economy. It says if you want to learn how ethnic networks can work to their members advantage, Kotkin has literally written the book and done it well. Full stop, close, quotation marks. It says, this is from the Washington Post, and it touches actually on, the, on, on, on some of our black diasporas in here. It actually was very interesting. It, it touched on, I think, the black Hebrews. You understand? It touched on some of the... Um, um, other African American um, establishments, you know what I'm saying? It says right here, it says, yes, tribalism, yes, yet tribalism to be successful in the modern context must also be leavened with a willingness to learn from and accept others, or it will prove ultimately self destructive. Now, if you've been studying, the teaching of his majesty, that should be clear, but some of our people are so caught up on the race thing, what white man, the white people, Europeans, so forth and so on, that they can't even recognize, you know what I'm saying, if there is a righteous Gentile. Like some of our Hebrew, um, uh, our Hebrew Israelites are so, so-called anti-so-called Gentile that, that sometimes they don't even recognize when ones amongst their own numbers, you know what I'm saying, are... Babylonian double agents, but that's their house, you know, that's their mansion, and they have to work that out in their mansion. Since they reject the king of kings and his Christ, they reject the Ethiopian Hebrews, they're going to have to learn certain lessons for themselves. But some of their numbers have been um, fellowshipping with I and I, and perhaps some of them can go forward to their people and, and bring that truth and bring that good news of the king of kings so they can see the full vision of God and His Christ. Now, this is another book that I, I didn't even, I almost forgot about this right here, but the Holy Spirit brought this to I and I, um, Remembrance, to show the I, this particular book, Tribes. 
right? This particular book, Tribes, right here, by this um, 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 Jewish guy, um, this Jewish, uh, you know, I don't know what his, his theology is, you know what I'm saying, of his acceptance of the Moshia, whether black or white, you know what I mean, is, but what he writes there and how he, how he also recognizes, you understand, um, I and I in this whole thing, you know, pretty much accurate, you know, we shouldn't have somebody write all about us. We need to do that, you understand, for ourselves. Like people say, oh, how come they didn't say such and such? Well, what, what's wrong? What, you cripple? You saying what, you cripple? You can't write? Well, you have no confidence? You need to be born again. And Yeshua, you know, the King of Kings and his Christ gives us that, you understand. Now, what I want to touch on here, right, is a couple of, a couple of matters related to this particular um, Tisha B'Av. You know, saying as well as on tribes. So we've already touched on Tisha B'Av, and there's more to Tisha B'Av. Like we said, there's a wiki page on Tisha B'Av. In the first part, we recommended that we would suggest that you check the video out, make notes of the different Google sites and and different pages out there, and go look at that for yourself. You know, saying so that when we have an opportunity to get a little bit more into that because it's Tisha B'Av and there's like three weeks that's following that. That's a part of that. That's what we wanted to heal up on Wendem Oludare who had called about it. He said, um, is this a holiday? And I said, holiday? You understand? And I didn't see it as a holiday in that sense. So I might have said no. And I, if I did say no, I, um, I apologize because it's not a holiday really. It's a holy day. So, you know, not to be all, if you say, all, quote, technical, if you say it's the same thing, it's not the same thing. It's like one brother in said, oh, there's 55 um, Saturdays. No, 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 it's not Saturn's day. You know what I'm saying? We're giving the day to Yahweh because it's Yahweh who made the day. He says, this is the day um, that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So it's not Saturday. That's what the Gentiles have made. You know what I'm saying? But there are 55, as it says right here. I think he was referring to this, matot, you know what I'm saying, matot, matos, the Hebrew for tribes. It's the first, it's, excuse me, it's the fifth word and the first distinctive word in the parsha, in this nabab, in this kuful, in this portion. And it is the 42nd weekly Torah portion or parsha kuful bamarinya. In the annual um, Judaic, they say Jewish a lot, you know what I'm saying, we prefer to say Judaic. You understand know more than not, but in the Judaic cycle of of Orit Nebab Minbab Torah reading, and it's the ninth. This is the ninth in the book of Numbers, the book of accountability, the book of computation, the book of doing the math, counting the course. It constitutes Numbers chapter thirty verses two to Numbers chapter thirty two verse forty two. Now we as Black Jews. Ethiopian Hebrews in the diaspora, that means in the America, the Caribbean, and scattered all over the place, we generally read it in July or early August. And so it's from July to early August time. Now, um, Rebbe Shlomo um, Ben Levi, um, the black rabbi, as the article is called, and it's from the blackjews.org, he, he writes why. Uh, Tisha B'Av, right, is important, is important to I and I, it's important to us. Please check out, download that article and study it for yourself, brothers and sisters. Wendemoche, Ehitoche, Bakachu, you right, please, you know. Um, the lunar solar Hebrew calendar, lunar solar Hebrew calendar, contains up to 55 weeks, right, or Samen Toch, right, or Subai, in a sense, if you go to the Gutters. But the exact number varying between 50 in common years, right, and 54 or 55 in leap years. Now, in leap years, for example, 2011 and 2014, from a Western Gentile perspective, is called a leap year. Now, the Parsha, um, a Matot, or the Kuful Negadoch, is read separately. But now this is in common years 
for example, 2010, 2012, 2013, that means next year, skip a year, 2014, not, not, not 2014, but you skip a year, 2015, 2017, and 2018. Now, this window where we're at right now in 2020 is a crucial period in time and space. We'll, hopefully, we have the grace to go into more on that, but just take a note of that. Parsha Matot or, or Minbab Negadoch, the reading called Negadoch in the Amharic and, 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 and the Parsha in the Hebrew called Matot is combined with the next Parsha, Masay, or the next Kuful, right, the next Kuful, and it's called Guzo, Guzo, Guzo. Right, or oh, guzo, 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 which means Johnny, guzo, right? In Bamarinya, that's the word guzo. So what you're actually learning, even in the Torah portion, reading and feedings, is you're learning key words, important words, important concepts. You will saying that as one then begin to proceed with their, their language and linguistic studies, you will saying it will come into the fullness. So first in spirit soul, psychologically, then, you know, in the body or the physical activities or the secular activities, it will be easy for you. You know, we're saying, you know, that's just I and I advice. That's just I and I counsel. But these two are combined, right, during these common years, not leap years, to help achieve the number of weekly readings, right, um, needed. You know, we're saying so that when we get to um, the Simchat Torah, the Fisaha, you know what I'm saying, the um, Orit, which is, which is the, eighth, the eighth day. It's a, it's a known as the eighth day. That eighth day is really when we come to the, the, at the end of the Sukkot. You know what I'm saying? There is seven main holy days in three main seasons, but then there's that eighth day. And it's at that eighth day that becomes the alpha and the omega of our cycle, and then we return to the beginning of the cycle in Bereshit, right, or Berasit, which is Bermejameria, Bamarinya, which is the beginning. Berasit, right, in the head, or in the actually female, feminine head, if you were to look at Ra, uh, um, Reshit and look at it properly from the, the Hebraics, right? All right, so let's go forward right here. This this um, motto, so we're gonna have to study actually both of both of these. And in some upcomings, what we were thinking to do is perhaps focus on vows in a vid by itself. Focus on like say the vengeance on Median in a vid by itself. Focus on cleansing from battle. Or focus on some of them in um, videos. By itself. Now, the last one. There's five. There's five portions in this. The last one speaks on land for the Reubenites and Gadites. I think we can learn something very interesting as we are now looking at the Promised Land and even within the dynamics of of Ethiopian World Federation. There's much that we can um, learn and understand for this, even from the example of the Reubenites and the Gadites. All right. Now let's just. Um, go to Masay for a moment so we can just get an overview of this particular um, double portion. So the Masay, 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 uh, Masai, or Masai, 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 right? Masai, I'm just looking at the Hebrew and, and, and pointing, pointing it according to what we know from the pure language and from Ethiopic. It's, it's the Hebrew for journeys, Bamarinya. It is guzo or guzo, guzo, right? It's the second word and the first distinctive word in the parasha in this portion and is the 43rd weekly Torah portion in the annual Judaic cycle of Torah reading. And the 10th and the last, it's the 10th and the last, people. We're there, so we're about to, we're about to get into um, the fifth book, the fifth and final Right of, of 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 this cycle of Torah portion readings and feedings that is called Devarim. So actually, after after this week's you understand portion, you understand we really begin really Devarim. You understand even though some of the subject matters we will continue to study as we're learning and growing, and some of the subject matters actually speak to things that we've been looking for and needing answers for. You understand and have not been resolved. 
because we have not been informed, we've been in ignorance, you know what I'm saying, of what the teaching of His Majesty and His Christ and what the foundation of our Father's house is really built upon. So here it says, so this is the tenth and the last in the book of Numbers. It constitutes Numbers chapter 33 and 1 to Numbers chapter 36 and 13. Now, we as black Jews and other Jews who are faithful, you'll send at least even in their conversion in the diaspora, generally read it in July or August. Now, the lunar solar, the lunar solar Hebrew calendar, or you could even say the female, male, male and females one, right, contain up to 55 it says right here Saturdays, actually, and, and maybe this is where the brethren got it from, you know, and, and wasn't being harsh, but just, you know, point of order. Even though it says Saturdays there, we have yet to write, you understand, our treatment from the Ethiopic, His Majesty's Bible perspective to this. But John says, first of all, see what they know and allow my Holy Spirit to guide you in the spirit of my son, of Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right? All right. So, with that in mind, 55 Sabbath, called in the West Coast Saturdays, the exact number varying between 50 in common years and 54 or 55 in leap years. Now, we keep going over this, but it's going to become important to test ourselves. You understand? Not to just, you know... Not from the ways when we're in the world, but so that we know iron sharpened iron. But this is the first level of becoming familiar with this. In leap years, for example, 2011 and 2014, Parashat um, Masai ma is read separately. In leap years, in common years, I mean, we have extra Saturdays or Sabbaths, in other words, within that cycle. Remember, Genesis chapter 1. Um, verse 14, it says that it says that the sun, the moon, the stars, and the heavens are for signs and seasons, days and years. You understand? We do not worship the stars. You understand? We do not worship the constellations. You understand? How 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 foolish would that be? But yet our people, yet we even individually have been foolish. We give thanks for that forgiveness. In Christ to the glory of Caduce Abatachin. Now, with that being overstood, so we know how this joins up, but what are the portions here? The portions here speaks about the journey. So notice something. After the accountability, right? Now, now let, let's see if we can understand this, right? After the accountability, remember, the Old Testament, right? The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Remember the veil off the eyes? But it's the Moshiach, right? It is, it, is, it is the faith and truth of our black Lord and Savior that now takes that veil off of our eyes, and the veil is done away with in the black Messiah, in Yeshua, in Getachin, Jesus Christos, is that veil taken away, it's done away with. Now I and I can see, you know, in the reality of the King of Kings and his Christ in real time. But not only to see it, but having that vision, we also have so very graciously instructions. Remember what it says in the book, well, actually we're coming up to that, I think in the book of number, uh, Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy, where it says that here is your wisdom. It says that the Torah is your wisdom in the sight of the nations. Wow, that's really amazing. I mean, that's really, wow. I mean, that's, that's a wild point. You know what I'm saying? You go to the, you go to It amazes. It's like go to Maui. It is, some, wow, it's amazing. That the Torah, right, Torah, the Orit, John say, is our wisdom, right, is our wisdom in the sight of the nations. So black people, have black people been wise as of late? <laughs> I mean, have they? Have black folks been wise as of late, or have we been foolish? I think that should be explainable, explainable, understandable. Anybody want to argue with that? They can go argue with themselves. John's people don't have time for that. You know, because we're studying terrain. You understand? We're not going to have time for the other stuff. You understand? Doing your own kind of stuff. You, you go after that. You understand? We don't have time for half a can stuff. You understand? We want the fullness. You understand? The fullness of the King of Kings and his Christ. 
um, half a can. You get that? Anyway, um, the contents here is four parts in my say or in the Amharic Torah book of Guzo. It's one, the stations of the Israelites' journey. There were different stations. You know what I'm There were different stations, different posts, you know what I'm saying? different responsibilities. And when I look around, even recently, we've been more on the Facebook. You understand? And we give thanks to our, our brothers and sisters and those who have helped us really, you know, they might not have um, um, money to donate or donations for, for, the, for that level, but they have helped out in other ways. And even those who have prayed, you know, or given a kind word. But we will especially want to thank those brothers you understand, and want to thank them more directly, but you're going to see that there's more of a Facebook presence, so forth and so on, out there. And it, it, it kind of shows us, you know, in real time, you know, saying that grace of, of Jah Rastafari in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And we just want to just say, say, Miskana Amasignat Chihalo. You know, saying, and I thank you all. Ina Amasignat Chihalen. To all of you, brothers and sisters, and of course individuals, we're going to put together a Facebook. Uh, we're going to put together a Facebook team, so those who are actively out there in different areas and aspects of the ministry probably have some call conferencings for the different groups, because some are called different, have different calls, have different gifts. Yo, know, saying that they would like to contribute towards the ministry, and many have said, you know, sent emails, and have said, hey, you know, I've been sending an email, and what, they've been patient. The I of them have been patient, but also recognize that it, it, little by little, you understand, and if one want to initiate something and really um, have the wherewithal and say, listen, I got brothers and sisters over here, you know, we're working together, and here's what we're doing. Can this be a, a, of any assistance? You already know how we can link and keep in touch. Just keep I and I in your prayers, in faith, and in truth. All right, brothers and sisters? So anyway... And just wanted to just make that, that was just on my heart and mind, I wanted to say that. A little bit more on that, y'all willing to come, all right? So here, the stations of the Israelite journeys, the different stations, the instructions, there were instructions for taking the land. People talk about, what you hear people say, hey, we want to be given some land. Yes, His Majesty gave us some land, but we see how that worked out among some, right? <laughs> Boy. Mm -hmm. The instructions for taking the land. Um, part three, the cities, the cities for the Levites and refuge. There were cities for the Levites. You know what I'm saying? I want to explain this thing about the Levites and the priests as well so, and how it connects with the Bahitawi, you know, in the Bahitawi or the Bahitana, as well as the um, Debtera, the Debtera or the Kohen, the Kahin. The last part, but not least, is the daughters of Zelophehad. The daughters of Zelophehad. In fact, um, we had touched on, actually it was the previous portion where we touched on um, Zelophehad, actually. Um, or, well, actually, that was in a previous portion. I don't think we went into the details, but um, it dealt with how women, I, I think it was the 41st portion, how, how, how the woman... Um, these daughters, how they were able to inherit as well. You know what I'm saying? Even though in the culture of that time, women, generally speaking, did not inherit in that sense. And now, we have to teach on that. We don't want to get too much in that because some people still are fighting against white supremacy, sexism, and Jah is not sexist. You know what I'm saying? He created the sexes. And he don't create people sexless. So he's not sexist. Overstand that. You understand? Now, let's deal with the first part of this first. All right? So we're going to just clear this for right now. You understand? Oh, perhaps we should keep this really up there. You understand? Just to remind one what, are, what the first principles of, of, of the word of the word are. The first principle of the oracles of the job of the words of Jah. In fact, I want to say this, so let's see if we can say this now. You, you know these uh, uh, zitzis right here? These zitzis, these zarf. I know some sisters are out there, sisters, y'all. Let me give you a closer, a closer shot. We want to see who out there can 
can help us to make some of these. There's some pages out there that actually teach ones on, you know, teach ones how to, you know, what the, what the technique is. See, this is where the name, the name of Yah is really, is really in it. The name of Jah is, is there. And we really need to, you know, get these and start to, and start to wear these as well. Some might say, well, it's just a little precept, but it's a, it's a precept of high, high value. You understand? So I say to the sistren, you understand, because we know that a lot of the sisters have the craft and the skills, you know, to do so. The men folk can, but we want the men to do what Josh say the men should be doing. You understand? We don't want to put even additional pressure, you understand, on the woman to do the man's part and the woman's part. It's bad enough, you understand, in this Babylon, what has already happened and still continues to go on. It's time for I and I to rise in grace. So I wanted to make a mention of this before in the next vid. You understand that those who are willing, those who have the skills and who are willing, you understand, contact I and I, you understand, through the, through the links. And what we're going to do is set up specified, um, maybe even Facebook, for certain particular activities, you understand, that we can in community, even if we are, you know, spread near and far work on collectively, you know what I'm saying? So those would be specific either groups or specific, um, yeah, groups and activities, you know what I'm saying? Because some people share certain talents and skills and can co-labor together. So only, almost be like committees, establishing committees for certain specified tasks. And this is for the Zerbs right here, the Zerbs. And I have this on the four, on the four portions of even this garment right here, and just wanted to show and to demonstrate that. So those who have these skills now, now I know many will say, yeah, I can do that, but you might be also doing a whole lot of other things. You, you know what I mean? This is not, this is not forcing any task on ones and ones. You understand? This is basically asking. John says to ask, and I and I shall receive. So we're going to deal with the the, the first some um, part. Of, of the portion which is going to touch on vows. I think that's very, very important. And there's much more to come, brothers and sisters. So stay tuned. You'll understand more to come. Yah willing. Shalom. Rastafari.